He brings every all the, everybody at that district. So everybody that's a member of one of those three stations comes up to station 10 on Highway 4. And those three stations and our pay crew, they all are led, they go through some type of training where they train together. Because so they're going to respond to calls together or they need to be familiar training together. Um, if it's not one of those days, let's say it's just a random Monday night, there's, they're not having to come to station 10. We still encourage those districts, you know, all three of those stations. So, like one one Monday night, everybody they go to West Side and they train on something that, that they all need to work on together, and they train together at West Side. And because it's not fair that everybody come to West Side at a time, the next the next week West Side may go to North Mountains, and so they take turns. So that way you don't have just two or three people sitting there trying to figure out. Okay, because you know, some things you can do. You know, if you're just having like a lecture or discussing things like we are, you can, you know, two or three people can have that conversation. But if you're actually physically putting ladders on the roof and pulling fire hoses and loading fires and that thing, then yeah, it, it's difficult for um, one or two people to do that by themselves. So, you know, those stations, you know, so, so get, they get together. It's possible not to see uh, them training on Monday night, two right. stations. You, 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 may, you may drive by the Shiloh station and all the doors are shut. That doesn't mean they're not training. They may be over at North Lounge on Old Point One and they're all doing some type of training yet. Yeah. And, and at those 18 stations, there's a handful of them that are substations. So those are there to have additional apparatus and equipment and there for coverage purposes. So that's not the main gathering place that we're training. In addition to what Gary provides and, and what the Chief provides, we also have firefighters who are staying certified, <clears throat> and so they handle and plan some of the training that stations do. So it's not just whoever would like to do it tonight. It's, I mean, there's some certification, and there's some accountability to who's preparing that. Sure. Well, what I really see, and, and John is somewhat disappointed a little bit, looking at the hours that some of our volunteers have, we give them an opportunity throughout the year to get over 500, 572 hours of training. But yet, the minimum that we require, that not even us, but the state requires, is only 24 hours. We provide them access to our employees. If they meet 10% of that, they meet the minimum standard. Right. Is any of those hours online training from study? So, so yeah. So I would say yes or no. So yeah, if they if they could, if they participate in an online course that's recognized, the state will allow that to count for their 24 hours. Now, where the where the caveat might say yes or no, because it's important to know if like we give them the opportunity to attend 240 hours of training, and we also every Monday night and every Saturday at 10, we provide them with stipends. We basically pay them to come train. Now, if they take an online course. We're not cutting them a check and saying, okay, you attended, you sat, sat home on your computer for two hours and took a class. We're going to put it in your file. The state is going to recognize it so you've got the minimum state requirements, but we're not going to include it when we turn in their, their um, stopping. According to this hour of accountability roster on page nine, are you going to lose five volunteers? <laughs> so, you not achieve 24 hours? Those at the very top, there's an explanation for mm -hmm. that. So actually the the five so the Wesley Overman who had 21 hours, he has actually since moved away and he's not with us anymore. Uh, but he did have hours in 2019. Stephen Dasher, um, he was only with us for part of the year. So um, he had taken a leave of absence and then came back. So that so the state allows that leave of absence. So now if he doesn't have 24 hours next year, yeah. Um, and then Charles and Marlene Crawley, they're just finishing their, um, um, uh, they're supposed to be testing out if they have already tested. Um, so they're also in that, if they kind of, um, you know, they, there's an explanation we can give the state why they're not there, why they haven't met their hours. Um, and then Judy Fletcher, yeah, we'll probably, you know, have to, um, Judy's going to have to come off the, the roll. So, of those five, two of them are definitely have to come off the rolls, and then the other three is because they're either new people or they don't have any absence and weren't members for all the time. Is this the total number of firefighters you have on the table? Uh, yes, sir. Lots of this stuff is short or is that adequate? You need 
need more? Or? I think it's fair to say that we're open for applications all the time. So we appreciate having individuals who are interested in coming and participate and provide, make themselves available to training uh, to provide the service to the citizens. Where we have a problem is people having their name on the list, us compensating them, but not attending fire. So that's part of the problem. To answer your question, yes, we would love to have more people. Yes, sir. We there are there are efforts made to encourage individuals to participate. Now, I will say, Bill and I have discussed this, you don't see the type of community involvement in fire departments that you did 30, 40 years ago when they were more of a specialized community in the sense of they were raising money they would get together and have barbecue, they would have a cake sale, those type of things. And that's a change in our environment, a change of our um, population as much as anything. Boy, you look part of that. Yes, sir. I mean, you know, 80s, 90s, it was more of a family, but it seems like as the years kept going, or as we kept moving forward, we would lose one or two, which would even cost us a father or a son. It was family. And today, it's a nationwide problem all the way across is volunteer firemen. It's, it's hard to get one, even harder to retain after a while. Um, it's, it's, a, it's a nation problem. Nationwide. You, you go back pre-1974, uh, and I'll force you to just be honest with you. No, I would not. We should get married in 74. Still young. But, but I can remember the Shiloh Station, still right there where I live at now, yes. is those volunteers that were there. Most of those volunteers around there were farmers that lived in that community so that they could jump off the tractor whenever they got the call and go straight to the fire. You don't see that today. Because that whole but that that whole thing of the community, those folks now are pretty much working a day job. That's the majority. I mean, not the farmer with a day job, but I mean they they were they were in Valdosta possibly or even in Ada or somewhere working a regular <coughs> job. And so their even their availability to be to respond to a fire period, they, that began to get more and more just a changing in, in society as much as move this away from the world and it more and more difficult. This is the wrong thing. I would like to point since we talk about the, the people at the top of the list, dude, I would ask you to go down and look at the bottom of the list. So the last three names on the list, Michael Savage, Dan Kennedy, Bailey Holt, those are some of our paid fires. But when you go up above them, Chad Easton, Tyler Carroll, Dennis Hester, Brandon Thibodeau, Valerie Landis, Terry Brown, Terry Coward, some of those, they've got 200 plus hours. Those are all volunteers. Um, so to me, that, there's two reasons I want to point that out. Number one, it shows that they didn't have opportunities nobody else had, so it can be done. But also, these are people, you know, some of these people, um, not that our pay staff did, I mean, they did everything, you know, did everything they were supposed to. These are people that volunteer to addition to what they work working their normal jobs and answering calls, they still found time out to give the community 200 plus hours just to train and make sure they're ready to answer those calls. How many paid uh, fighters do we have? 12. Well, they're all paid uh, <coughs> from the king. And you had five administrative staff. <clears throat> um, back to the, the compensation uh, and also the record. <coughs> First reference to the training of our career uh, career firefighters. Um, they are required to complete at least 212 hours of training. And that training is um, classified as a more stringent level of training. And uh, of course,
before you die as understanding. Yes, sir. Yeah. And also, I want to back up just half a second and clarify what I said earlier about 572. My math is wrong. But you're at 240. <laughs> Just uh, still um, in the 240, that's plenty of opportunity, and then you're only requiring 10% to 24 hours. In addition to the counties, in addition to $40 per weeknight stipend, you also provide $45 um, per uh, weekend. Two weeks, how many of those weekends do we have that term? I would say uh, at least half, maybe a little bit more. Uh, a lot of times uh, it is not combined with something we have at Station 10. Uh, we are required to have company training where uh, we have to have a mixture of the pay, the volunteers, something specialized. So, out of the 52, probably somewhere in the 30 uh, weekend range, that we have something, something planned to put on. Mm -hmm. And in that audience, just in firefighting, we can be vehicle education. Uh, perfect example, we had uh, Tiff County put on a farm uh, accident training a couple Saturdays ago. Actually, it was two days of week, Saturday and Sunday, 16 hours. They brought in tractors, mowers, hay bellers, and for 16 hours, they, they worked on farm accidents. Caldwell EMC comes every year and does an electrical mm -hmm. safety program for them. Sure, you have a comment or a question? Yes, yeah, since we're talking about volunteers, um, and I know that this. This issue has been ongoing for quite a while. It's not something that just popped up. Right. I mean, it's been ongoing for a long time. Long, long, long. Uh, is there anything in the training requirements, or in from your, your opinion, from a compensation standpoint, that in your view, that is that that is a detriment or, or, or a handicap for firemen to be able to come and get the training? Is there a reason for them not to come? If they say it's well, it's not worth my time. If I just get my 24 hours, I'm done. I believe every every training class we try to give it. Uh, most most of some find some interest in what we do. Uh, we have a good uh, training staff all the way across the board. Even the volunteers that have a training officer. Uh, I really don't see a reason why they should. Find, find something interesting in any other class that we put on. I believe it, if I mentioned the question, we yes. not a stumbling block or a roadblock. They, yeah. they, they should be interested in everything we do. But the compensation that they get to attend the training is, is not an issue with them. I don't think so. We, our volunteer firefighters are compensated better. I would dare say, no. now I could, if you ask permission to study and ask me, I might get proven wrong, but. As I've gone around to different chief conferences and things, our volunteers are compensated better than probably any volunteers in the state. And part of the issue is there's um, fair labor standards comes into play because you know Lloyd and I have talked about some ideas. Okay, what are some things we can do to maybe change our compensation structure to re maybe reward more for attending? Calls while you know still requiring training, and you know it, it's by definition volunteer firefighters you do it because you know, it's not for them. So we try to provide a stipend, and it's really based on we want to make sure that the gas they spend driving back and forth to the station, that kind of stuff. Like it's not costing them anything, um, but if you get into giving them much more than what we do now, then. They become true employees, and then you get into a, a, and then you really open up Pandora's box. Okay, I mean, and that's kind of what I was getting at. But if, you know, if the $45, and I'm just, you know, using that as an example, but if the $45 for the training 
and they have to take their vehicle and they have to come back, go to whichever fire station in whatever that district is. Uh, you, you're saying that your volunteers are getting compensated at or above what most others are. Maybe but in all I'm honesty, not. does that, that that doesn't still mean that it is worth their while to go do it. What I'm looking for, I just want to make sure that that is not an issue as why we're having a drop off of volunteers. The pay. The pay. I do not think so. That's what I'm, that's what I'm trying to get. In addition to the pay, you also Thank you. 